Okay, so I'm going to show you how to tie one of my favorite emerger patterns. Uh, these are fairly simple to tie, and these are very effective when fishing for trout. The best way that i found fishing them is under an indicator. Uh, I usually put one or two very small split shot about 12 to 18 inches above the fly, just to kind of get it down into the feeding zone quicker. Um, and like I said, uh, they can be very, very effective. Um, what I used here today is a size 14 uh, Daiichi. It, this is a 1530 hook. Um, the tail is a Coke de Leon. Um, this stuff is a little tricky to work with. Once you get the hang of it though, um, it's a great material for, for your tails. Um, the body, uh, I basically build up with just thread. Here is just a standard gray. This is a three-aught uh, unithread. I uh, use a little, little thicker thread on these. Um, it's ju it just takes fewer wraps to build the body up. Um, you just got to be careful when tying off. And then the bulky part here is just the Adams gray dubbing. So let's get started. Uh, you basically want to secure your hook in your vise. Make sure you leave room uh, for all your wraps and be careful not to catch your thread on, on the hook point here. That can be a pain in the butt if you break off halfway through a fly. So you take your thread, start right behind the eye, do about three, four, five wraps. Make sure that's uh, secure. Cut that off close. Now what I do is I go down the shank of the hook and then I'll come back up to the middle. Um, this basically builds up a little bit of thread base on your hook shank, so the Coque de Leon, hope I'm saying that right, um, does not slip around uh, the steel. Uh, it just makes it, it gives it a little bit of bite, so it, it's, I guess you could say it sticks a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier. So with this stuff, you can see how fine it is. Um, I usually break off four to five of these little guys. Um, for my tail, They'll, there's the tail there. Um, you want to try to get these as even as you can. Um, and then you want your tail to be the same length as your hook shank. So once you get the proper length, hold those in your left hand if you're, if you're a right-handed tire. Uh, what I do is a couple, couple loose ones just to make sure it's where I want it to be. Once you're, you're secured, you can be a little, little more um, thorough, a little tighter with the wrap. Um, and what I do is when I get to the back, when I get close, I will go underneath, I will go underneath that, uh, that, that tail just to kind of, just to kind of pick it up a little bit. It uh, spreads out the, the fibers just slightly. Um, it, uh, it separates it from the hook, um, the turn here. The bend, so it gives it more of a, of, a, of a tail appearance, I guess, if you will. Then I go about halfway up, trim off the the upper bits that basically are just garbage. Um, then I give it a few more wraps here, just to build that that up. This is the body, I guess, if you will, which is basically just this again. It's the Adams gray dubbing. Um, now with this, you don't want to put it on. You don't want to put it on too heavy, too quick. So you kind of want to build it up. Um, I think this is basically um, about a two-inch uh, dubbing noodle, if you will. Um, if it if it gets a little fuzzy or furry on you, you can wet your fingers just a little bit. Don't go too crazy. Um, just to kind of tighten that up, then you can slide that up to your hook. Get your thread ready. I'm just gonna get this top a little spin. And then you wrap. Now I usually start in the middle, right here. So once I start to build it up, um, don't go back with this. You always wanna go up towards the front a little if you have to go in one direction. Um, once you get it looking nice, um, what I do is I'll do one or two wraps, kind of like a crisscross through the material just to give it a little more strength, a little more durability. 
and then you want to finish off in front of this, in front of your your dubbing, but just behind the the eye of the hook. Uh, this is where you're going to tie off right at the eye. What this does is it cleans up any material. Um, you want to keep all of your material away from the eye, so obviously you can get your tippet through it on the river. It's a pain in the butt if you have material or glue or anything in those eyes. Um, just makes it easier to be cleaner um, from the beginning when you're tying. You will uh, save yourself a lot of frustration on the water. So then you go with uh, your whip finish. I usually do, whoops, usually do a three turn. And again, you want to be right behind the eye of the hook. Secure that down tight. And uh, you don't need to do more than three. Um, a lot of these flies, less is better. Do just enough wraps so it's done. Um, you don't want to have, uh, you know, overkill. You don't want to have too much material, uh, too much thread, too much anything. Um, now this tail, this tail might be just slightly long, but I, I also, I recommend not cutting these because once you cut them, they don't come to that fine point. Um, and they just don't look as nice as, as they do here. But the only thing that I could say about this fly, it's pretty good, except for the tail might be a little long. Uh, that could be nitpicking, but hey, to each their own. <laughs> anyway, hope you like the video. Um, hope you like the fly. Please leave comments. Let me know if it works, if you catch fish, um, have any questions, anything like that. Uh, also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be great too. And uh, tight lines, everyone.